Welcome back, everyone. It's good to be back. We're going to start here talking about Chapter 9, which is about rational functions. Uh, so we're going to start here with just a definition. So a rational function which in this definition I'm going to refer to as r of x is defined as r of x equals p of x over q of x where p of x and q of x are polynomials and q of x is not equal to zero. So we remember what polynomials are. We spent a good long time talking about those. So a polynomial is the sum or difference of monomials. And a monomial is a real number times a variable whose exponent is a positive whole number. So things like x squared plus 5x plus 7 is a polynomial. So rational functions are going to behave very similar to the way that fractions behaved. So most students in this class really don't like fractions um, and don't feel very comfortable working with them or using them. Um, but it's really a kind of a critically important skill that you're able to kind of get a little bit better at. Um, the better you feel and the more comfortable you are dealing with fractions, kind of the easier this chapter is going to go. So I'm just going to start here today before we dive in um, to just kind of review how we do some basic operations with fractions because the operations that we're going to do with rational functions and rational expressions are going to be like natural extensions of how we dealt with a fraction. So let's look at an example here. Um, so the first fraction skill that I want to review is reducing. And probably a lot of us um, didn't ever learn a super systematic approach to reducing a fraction. Um, this is the approach that I want to kind of present to you because we're going to use this same idea when dealing with rational expressions and some of our little shortcuts that we might have learned in elementary school as our primary method are not going to extend um, with rational expressions. There's just not an obvious extension because, well, dividing as two polynomials is not something that most of us can do in our head. Um, and we'd like to avoid having to make these problems longer than possible. Um, so, so a lot of the shortcuts for a f reducing a fraction become a much lengthier process than um, when we ex try to extend that to dealing with a rational expression. So let's just look at a simple example like... Um, 24 over 60. So some of us can probably reduce this in our head or would reduce this in our head in maybe two or three steps. The way I want you guys to think about reducing is to think about doing a prime factorization. So we've done this before when we dealt with square roots. And you might be thinking to yourself, like, 
why do I need to do this? Like I can do this problem in my head. And I agree that probably many of us can do this problem in our head. The issue is you're not going to be able to do the rational expression problems in your head. So the process that I'm using here is really important that we understand what's going on. And if you understand with the fractions, it's easier to understand with the rational expression. So what we've done is we started by factoring the numerator and denominator. Now factoring when you're dealing with a number just means doing a prime factorization. Factoring when you're dealing with a polynomial, like we will with a rational expression, is a different story. And we'll get there in a few minutes. So what I've done is I've basically translated this problem just into a multiplication problem. Now, if the only operation going on in your numerator is multiplication, which is what we have there, and the only operation going on in the denominator is multiplication, which is what we have there, we can reduce. So I notice that I have a 3 in the numerator and denominator that I can cancel out. I have two twos in the denominator and three three or three twos in the numerator, so I can cancel all of my twos from the denominator and two of the twos from my numerator, leaving me with one two in my numerator and one five in my denominator. So my final answer here would be two fifths. Let's see how this extends to rational expressions now. So let's consider x squared plus 7x over x squared. So the most common mistake I see students making is they go, oh, I'll just cancel the x squareds. This is super wrong. Mr. Kulik will give you no partial credit if he catches you doing this. You can never, ever do this. Ever, 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 ever. And you might be looking at me with side eye right now going, isn't that just exactly what you did in the previous example? No. In the previous example, the only operation going on in the numerator was multiplication. And the only operation going on in the denominator was multiplication. In this problem, we have addition, so you cannot reduce like this. That is 100% incorrect. Do not ever, 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 ever reduce like that. How did we start the previous example? We started by factoring. That is the first step I need to do here. Specifically, the numerator is the piece that needs to be factored because it's currently an addition problem. I need to turn it into a multiplication problem. The way to do that is by factoring. So if I look at the numerator, I see x squared plus 7x. And I'm going to try to factor this. I look at this for a moment, and it becomes quite clear to me that I can factor this just by taking greatest common factor of x. Now if I look at the numerator, the only operation going on in the numerator outside of the parentheses is multiplication. Now I'm free to reduce. So what I can reduce is an x up here with one of the x's down there, leaving me with one x still in the denominator. So my final answer would be x plus 7 over x. Let's do another. Okay. 
So let's say we have x squared minus 2x minus 15 over x squared minus 9. Again, the first step is to factor. I have to factor the numerator and the denominator. So to factor a quadratic, what I'm looking for are two numbers that multiply to give me negative 15 and then add to give me negative 2. Do you see the two numbers that do this? I do. It's negative 5, so I'll write x minus 5, and positive 3, so I'll write x plus 3. Next, I need to factor the denominator. If I look at the denominator, I notice it's also a quadratic, but this quadratic is in a special form. Do you remember what this special form is called? We called this the difference of two squares. And we observed that when we had things of the form a squared minus b squared, they factored into a plus b times a minus b. So in our case, our a squared is x squared. So a is just x. Our b squared is 9. So b is just 3. And now we factored the numerator and denominator completely. So if I look at the numerator, the only operation going on between the parentheses is multiplication. And in the denominator, the only operation going on in between the parentheses is multiplication. So I'm free to cancel the parentheses. The x plus 3s are identical, so I can cancel them out, leaving me with x minus 5 over x minus 3. And so this is our final answer. Let's do one more, and then we'll move on to multiplication division. So again, the first step is to factor the numerator and denominator. So if I look at the numerator, I see there's a greatest common factor of 2x there. So if I factor that out, I'm left with 2x times x plus 5. Now to factor the denominator, this is going to be a little bit more complicated because notice the leading coefficient is 3. So to factor the denominator, I need to find the two numbers that multiply to give me 3 times 5, and then add to give me 16. Well, it shouldn't take too long to notice those two numbers are going to be 1 and 15. But that doesn't allow me to go straight to the factored form. What I have to do is I have to replace that 16x with 1x plus 15x. So that's how I'm using these two numbers, is I'm going to use them to replace that middle number. And then I make two groups. From the first group, I can take out an x. From the second group, I can take out a 5. I notice then each of these has a x or 3x plus 1 in it. When I factor that out, I'm left with just the x plus 5. And now that I'm in factored form, I can reduce. Here the x plus 5s will cancel, leaving me with 2x over 3x plus 1. Next up, we need to talk about multiplication. So again, let's go back and start with fractions. So let's say we do 4 ninths times 12 eighths. Um, actually, let's not do that. Let's do um, 15 eighths. 
So if you remember, to multiply fractions, we multiply straight across, and then we can reduce. Or alternatively, we can reduce before we multiply. This is the better option for us. So we'd want to start by doing prime factorization. So even though these were technically two separate fractions, I'm still going to write them as one fraction where everything that was in the denominator just went into the denominator and everything in the numerator just went in the numerator. I didn't bother to write down these prime factorizations because these numbers were all quite small and should be things that we could comfortably do in our head. And now I'm going to reduce. So I have two twos in the numerator and three twos in the denominator. So I can cancel all the twos from the denominator, leaving me with one two in the, I'm sorry, all the twos in the numerator, leaving me with one two in the denominator. I can then reduce the threes, so I can reduce all the threes from the numerator, with leaving me with one three in the denominator. So if I see what I have left, I have 5 over 3 times 2, or 5 sixths. Let's see how this works when we extend this to deal with rational expressions. Okay, so we're going to start this problem kind of with the same idea that we had before. So I'm going to start by factoring. So if I look at 3x minus 3x squared, I notice I can take out a greatest common factor of 3x, leaving me with 1 minus x. If I look at x squared plus 4x minus 5, I need to find the two things that multiply to give me negative 5 and add to give me positive 4. Hopefully you guys can see that would be 5 and negative 1. So I have x plus 5 times x minus 1. If I look at the next piece, x squared plus x minus 20, I need two things that multiply to give me 20 and add to give me positive 1. So that would be 5 and negative 4. So that's x plus 5, x minus 4. And then the 3x is just going to stay the same. So that will allow me to reduce. So I notice that the x plus 5s can cancel. The 3x's can cancel. And now take a look here. This 1 minus x and x minus 1 are very, very similar. Is there a way that I can make them the same just by factoring? Well, if you look closely, in the numerator I have a positive 1 but a negative x. And in the denominator I have a positive x but a negative 1. If I factor a negative 1 out, that would cause the x now to be positive and the 1 to be negative. So now they're the same, and I could reduce them. So if I look now, everything has been crossed out in the denominator, and in the numerator I have a negative 1 and an x minus 4. And if I multiply that through, I get 4 minus. Let's do another. Say 2x squared minus 10x over x squared minus 25 times x plus 3 over 2x squared. 
So again, the first step is going to be to factor everything. So if I look at 2x squared minus 10x, I can take out a greatest common factor of 2x, leaving with x minus 5. If I look at x squared minus 25, I notice that's a difference of two squares. So I can factor 2, x minus 5 times x plus 5, x plus 3 is already prime, and 2x squared is already prime, so there's nothing I need to do there, so I can just copy those down. And now I'm ready to start reducing. So I notice in the numerator and denominator I both have the x minus 5, so those can cancel. I have the factor of 2, so those cancel. And then I have an x in the numerator and an x squared in the denominator, so all the x's in the numerator can cancel, and leaving me with 1x in the denominator. So that's all I can cancel. So I'm going to have x plus, five, or x plus 3 over x times x plus 5 as my final answer. Next up is division, and this will be the last topic for today. And again, before we start talking about dividing rational functions, I want to talk about division with fractions. So let's say we have um, 4 over 15 divided by 25, um, or I'm sorry, 9 or uh, 12 over 25. So if you remember, way back to your elementary days, we said that divide, division of fractions is the same thing as the multiplication of their reciprocals. So I can do that. And now this is just a multiplication problem. So we can treat it the exact same way. So I'll start by doing a prime factorization for the things in the numerator and then a prime factorization for things in the denominator. And then I can start to reduce. So I notice that I have a 2 squared in both the numerator and denominator. And I have a 5 in the numerator and two fives in the or a 5 in the denominator and two fives in the numerator, leaving me with one 5 in the numerator. At this point, I've canceled out everything that I can. So I'm left with a 5 in the numerator, and then 3 times 3, or 9 in the denominator. Okay. So let's try one now with uh, rational, ex or rational expressions. So let's say we have 7x over 2x minus 10 divided by x squared minus 6x over x squared minus 11x plus 30. So the first step is to rewrite this as a multiplication problem. So I'm going to take the fraction on the right, flip it upside down, and turn it into a multiplication problem. And now I'm going to try to factor. So if I look at the numerators, 7x is prime, so there's no factoring I need to do there. 11x, or I'm sorry, x squared minus 11x plus 30. I need to find two things that multiply to give me 30, and add to give me negative 11. So those two things are negative 5 and negative 6. If I look at the denominators now, 2x minus 10 has a greatest common factor of 2, leaving me with x minus 5. And then x squared minus 6x has a greatest common factor of x, leaving me with x minus 6. And now all my factoring is done, so I can go and try to reduce. So I notice that I have uh, x plus 5s in the numerator and denominator, 
I have x minus sixes in the numerator and denominator, and I have x in the numerator and denominator. So that leaves me with just seven over two. Okay, so let's do one more example and then we'll be done for today. So my last example here is 6x squared plus x minus 15 over 4x squared divided by 3x squared plus 5x. So again, the first step is going to be to rewrite this as a multiplication problem. So notice that on the right I don't have a fraction, so I'm just going to think about it as this 3x squared plus 5x over 1. So when I rewrite this as a multiplication problem, the, new, or the first fraction stays the same, and then the fraction on the right I'm going to flip upside down or make a reciprocal, which gives me this. And now it's going to be time to factor. So I look at this polynomial and I go, oh, bugger, because if you look, the leading coefficient isn't 1. So to factor this, I need to find the two numbers that multiply to give me 6 times negative 15, which is negative 90, and then add to give me positive 1. Well, 10 and negative 9 will do it. So I have x squared plus 10x plus a negative 9x minus 15. I'll make my two groups, take out a greatest common factor of 2x, leaving me with 3x plus 5. From the second group, I can take out a negative 3, leaving, with the greatest, or leaving me with 3x plus 5. If I look at each of these now, I notice that I have a 3x plus 5 in common to each. When I factor that out, I'm left with 2x minus 3. Now if I do the denominators, 4x squared is prime. I don't have to do anything there. The second piece of the denominator, 3x squared plus 5x, I notice has the greatest common factor of x. So when I factor that out, I'm left with 3x plus 5. And now I'm ready to start to reduce. So the 3x plus 5 is common in the numerator and denominator, so those can factor out. All that I'm left with in the numerator is the 2x minus 3. And in the denominator, I have 4x squared times x, which becomes 4x cubed. So there's my final answer. So that's going to be it for today. Uh, for your homework, you should work on uh, the worksheet 1 for chapter 9. Thanks.